You're listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. Each week, your host, Polly Requa, interviews veterinarians and individuals in the pet industry from across the nation answering pet questions. Bark and Wag podcast is produced weekly for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at BarkandWag.com under the podcast tab. That's B-A-R-K-N-W-A-G.com. Please remember to subscribe to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Bark and Wag is dedicated to protecting our dogs through advocacy, education, and supporting like-minded dog lovers by selling custom pet products. Bark and Wag is excited to announce our new partnership with a Colorado hemp farm to produce a line of CBD products for your pets. Bark and Wag has CBD pet tincture available in 300, 750, 1200, and 2400 milligrams. Bark and Wag CBD is pet safe, no THC, it's made in the USA, and is CO2 extracted. Please check out Bark and Wag's website, BarkinWag.com. That is B A R K, the letter N W A G.com, to see our line of CBD and awesome merchandise. We love pooch ideas for podcasts and merchandise, so anytime send an email to Polly at BarkinWag.com with your suggestions. Welcome to Bark and Wag 15 Minute Vet Talk. I'm your host, Polly Requa. Today we're talking to Dr. Lori Cesario, owner of Canine Cancer Academy, on how important cancer detection is for a pet. Thanks, Lori, for coming back. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Yes, love the podcast with you. I wanted to discuss signs of pain, when to visit a vet, and when we should be really aware of the quality of life for our pet. Okay, perfect. Um, This is... You know, it's a very hard topic, but I wanted to have you on so that I can forward this podcast to all of the rescue sites and pug sites that I'm on where these, you know, pug owners say, when do I know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Never, never an easy question. No, no. Um, So I guess if we, if we first talk about pain in dogs, we have to just first remember that dogs aren't people. They express pain very differently than we do, and they hide their signs of pain. So we kind of have to be detectives. So, you know, if we're painful, we're usually going to make it pretty obvious that we're in pain. You know, we're going to complain about it. We're going to make a big deal. But dogs just don't do that. They're not going to vocalize Um, like we might expect them to, you know, a dog might vocalize and every breed of course is different, but a dog might vocalize if they're hit by a car or suffering some sort of traumatic event. But in general, they can be in quite a bit of pain and, you know, be acting relatively normally for the most part. I think the, the greatest example of that is a dog that's just limping. In most cases, if a dog is limping, you know, they're doing so because they're painful. I would say maybe an exception to that is if they're limping because of some neurologic issue. But if a dog is limping, they're painful and they should be treated for that pain. Just to kind of put into perspective, I've had dogs that have come in and they've been limping because they have bone cancer and that tumor is kind of destroying the bone and we take x-rays to try and make a diagnosis and to see how advanced it is and the x-ray actually shows that the leg is broken due to the bone tumor Mm. and then when I tell the family that the leg is broken they are just shocked because the dog was eating the dog was interacting with the family normally Everything was normal. He was just limping, no complaining, nothing like that. So they can honestly be in fairly significant pain, fairly severe pain, and just be limping. So if if your dog's limping, um, you know, just get him checked out by a vet. Certainly if he's roughhousing and he comes up lame, you know, and it's better after two days, no big deal. But otherwise, just just have him get checked out. I would say the, the other big thing is discomfort due to arthritis. You know, arthritis starts at a much younger age than most of us are aware of. So even if, you know, your dog is maybe middle-aged and kind of 
slowing down after walks or maybe a little stiff getting up and down, slow getting up and down, whether they're middle-aged or older, Mm -hmm. um, that's because their joints are bothering them and, and they have some discomfort. And that's definitely something that uh, we, we shouldn't say, you know, oh, they're just getting old because yes, they are. But, you know, there are plenty of things that we can do to make them more comfortable despite them having arthritis. Other maybe um, less commonly recognized signs of pain include things like um, rubbing their mouth against the floor if their mouth is uncomfortable. Sometimes they'll paw at their mouth or their eye if any of those areas are uncomfortable. Um, Sometimes they'll do kind of a a downward dog type stretch if their abdomen is uncomfortable. But the difficulty with pain is that many of the signs of pain could be pain, but they can be just a normal behavior. So obviously with the stretch, your dog could just be stretching or it could be abdominal pain. Um, Anything like decreased appetite or or lethargy, um, you know, those could be signs of pain, but they could also just mean that your dog's not feeling well. I think another big thing is that when you're trying to figure out if your dog has an adequate quality of life, um, isn't feeling well, or is painful, um, and you're having this discussion with your vet, which, which I think you should, then you should definitely ask your vet, you know, what do you think about his quality of life? Do you think it's adequate? Instead of, do you think my dog is painful? Because I know just from my experience with my cancer patients, in in most cases, cancer doesn't necessarily um, cause them to have pain, but it might just cause them to feel unwell. And if you remember to the last time you felt really sick or had something like the flu, you know, sometimes feeling sick is just as bad or even worse as being in pain. So we really have to think of the of the big picture. If your dog has nausea, um, is eating less, is drooling, um, lip smacking, all of those things are earlier signs of nausea that happen before they actually vomit. So that is certainly a sign of feeling unwell and not having a great quality of life. So those things should be treated. I know dogs that have had soft stool or diarrhea for years that have hasn't been treated and that doesn't feel well. So whenever we're talking about quality of life, you always want to think about what can be improved. You know, you have a baseline and if you feel like your dog is nauseous or has soft stool or is uncomfortable, um, you want to just sort of get them the help they need and then kind of tweak things as you go. And when we're trying to think about the big picture, I also ask people the question, you know, do you think your dog is loving life? Because that's what we want for our dogs. We want them to be able to enjoy all the things that they normally enjoy, whether that's playing or going for walks or being able to go swimming or whatever you guys typically do to enjoy time together. And if they're not enjoying life, um, you know, then we have to figure out, well, can we intervene and help them enjoy life together? And, and sometimes the answer is yes. And, and sometimes the answer is no. I know sometimes that when a dog is older or really not feeling well, we maybe don't want to take him to the vet because we worry that, the stress of the car ride is just too much for him and we don't want to put him through that. Um, I would say in those scenarios, then maybe you could look into, and certainly it's location specific, but sometimes there are palliative and hospice care veterinarians that can actually come to your home Mm -hmm. and they specialize in quality of life and what can we do to improve quality of life. And so they have the benefit of having that ex- extra expertise, but they also get to see your dog in his normal home environment. So he's more relaxed. They can see how he moves around in the home. They can give you adjust uh, recommendations for maybe how to modify your house so he can get around better. And because he's at his own house in his normal home environment, 
he's going to be acting more normally rather than when he's at the vet clinic and and probably trying to act more normally. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, we've had uh, vets come to the home. Yeah, it is yeah. it is nice, especially um, for dogs that are older or are really large, and um, and for those that aren't uh, really aren't feeling well. And you know, making the decision uh, to put a dog down, excuse me, is is never easy. But I think we always have to think about them. You know, they were there for us every day throughout their entire life. And I don't think there should be any guilt with making that decision. We shouldn't ever feel like it's letting them down or that we're not doing everything possible for them. You know, in veterinary medicine, we sort of feel like, you know, if they're uncomfortable or if whatever condition or disease they have is contributing to a poor quality of life, and if they're just no longer loving life, then it's almost like a, a gift that we can give to them so so they don't have to suffer anymore. But I, I, I do think it's important to maybe get a second opinion and a second set of eyes because many times if if we see our dog every single day, we're not going to see the small incremental changes um, that might suggest that maybe they're just feeling differently or slowing down or, you know, maybe they lost 10 pounds. And so it's, it's nice to get your vet's opinion or a family member's opinion um, because sometimes there's a bit of bias. You know, we always want them to be doing a little bit better than maybe they are. So um, that second opinion is really important as well. Yeah, I, I do think it's uh, the owner's responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's when you can see that your dog is starting to fail. Mm -hmm. I mean, the dog doesn't want to be not able to get up or going yeah. to the bathroom in the house or, you yeah, know, they're just not comfortable anymore. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it is, it is a hard topic, but one that um, you did a great job and, um, you know, I, I think people will appreciate these um, tips and, you know, how to take care of your pet in the final stages. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's a difficult topic, but, um, you know, don't hesitate to ask your vet for their honest opinion or for what they would do if, if your dog was theirs. Um, you know, it's a time for honest and open communication because it's a really important topic for sure. Well, thank you very much for being on the podcast and we hope that you'll come back. Thank you for having me. I'd love to come back. All right, great. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, www.barkandwag.com, to your friends and other pet owners. Have a pressing question for a veterinarian? Ask your question at barkandwag.com under the podcast tab. This has been a KFR production. Join us next time for another edition of Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk.